Odo of Châtillon was born in Lagary, Kingdom of France, in 1042, in a noble family of knights of châtillon sur marne province of Champagne. Miles of Châtillon was his father and Avenel of Montfort his mother. He was named Odo or Otho when he was born, but later received the name Urban II when he became Pope of the Catholic Church. He received an ecclesiastical education and entered the Order of St. Benedict, thanks to which he held his first position as canon and archdeacon of the Cathedral of Reims. Then in 1070, he became prior at the monastery of Cluny under the influence of his master Bruno of Cologne and the great abbot St. Hugo. He was later sent to Rome where Pope Gregory VII appointed him. On the one hand, Cardinal Bishop of the ancient city of Ostia on the Tyrrhenian Sea. And, on the other hand, his assistant and principal advisor in 1078. Odin of Lagary proclaimed himself as one of the staunch defenders of the Gregorian reform, a clerical movement that sought to eliminate social vices that overlooked the preeminence of secular powers and gospel mandates, such as the buying and selling of ecclesiastical offices and services, simony, the marriage of members of the clergy, Nicolasm, and the provision of clerical rents and titles, investiture controversy. Odin's advocacy intensified when he became the apostolic legate of the pontiff in 1083 in the Holy Roman Empire, a position he held until 1085. He clashed with Emperor Henry IV over the investiture controversy and was in fact briefly imprisoned on the emperor's orders. He also opposed Pope Victor III at the beginning of his pontificate, but when he died in 1087, Odo was one of Gregory VII's bishops who attended Teresina for the election of the successor to the papacy. Prior to that event, he played a pivotal role during his stay in Saxony by having appointed many men loyal to Gregory to vacant sees. In addition, he held a council or synod at Quedlinburg, where the anti-pope Wybert of Ravenna and his followers were anathematized. So his name already had a strong echo to the point that he had been suggested by both Gregory and Victor for the papal office. So that on March 12, 1088, he was unanimously elected as the highest pontiff under the title of Urban II. Among his first acts as pope, he exhorted the rulers and bishops who had been faithful to Gregory to maintain their loyalty for he was to give them continuity to the Gregorian precepts. However, taking office was not easy for him. Discord with Emperor Henry IV and Antipope, Clement III, prevented him from entering Rome at first, as it was under siege. He then turned to the Count of Sicily, Roger I, for support from the Normans. They confronted the Antipope's troops, and he was finally able to take office in St. Peter's Basilica in November 1088. However, he had to take refuge on the island of St. Bartholomew, where he decided to excommunicate his enemies, Henry IV and Clement III. So later he had to generate certain strategies to regain his sphere of influence in the empire, such as marrying the widowed Countess Matilda of Tuscany to Welf II, Duke of Bavaria, with the aim of joining forces against the Holy Roman Emperor in the war that was fought in northern Italy. At the end of 1089, he held the Synod of Melfi, where new decrees against Nicolaism and Simony were established. When he returned to Rome, he had already achieved peace between the Normans Roger I and his nephew Bohemond, and thus sought to reaffirm the loyalty of the Norman troops. In northern Italy, Emperor Henry IV had defeated Matilda of Tuscany, so Clement III had once again taken Rome for about three long years, during which Urban II was condemned to exile in southern Italy, during which time he held several councils in which ecclesiastical discipline was further structured around the precepts of the Gregorian reforms. Finally, Matilda's troops suppressed Henry IV's troops in the fortress of Canossa, 
The humiliation was such that Conrad, the Emperor's son, decided to flee and join the side of Matilda and Welf II, that is, the Lombard League. Thus he was crowned King of Milan, the center of imperial power in Italy. At last, Urban II had the way open to enter Rome, although the partisan forces of the Antipope were still there, so at first he had to take refuge in the fortress of the Frangipani family. So many setbacks had distanced him from the throne for six years and had left him in a situation of dependence that had filled him with debts. So the French abbot Geoffrey of Vendôme came to his aid, and some time later Urban II named him Cardinal Deacon of St. Prisca in return. Although he had finally acceded to his lathe in Rome, in March 1095 he travelled to Piacenza for a council of pacification and reforms. The Synod dealt with the intimate and conjugal life of Henry IV and Philip I of France. The conflicts between Urban II and these two monarchs continued, but for the pontiff it was the perfect opportunity to start talking about the Crusades. However, it was not until the Council of Clermont in November 1095 that the Byzantine Emperor Alexios I Komnenos' request for military aid in the face of the Seljuk threat was discussed. Urban II called on the European monarchs to provide such support, which meant declaring war on the Muslim rulers who dominated the Holy Land. For this purpose, they had to convince the Christian knights that it was a divine precept. That is, the Holy War had a redemptive power for them, who were conditioned to think of themselves as sinners, so the expedition represented a purifying penance that would save them from hell. Thus, the Muslims were presented as ruthless and inhuman enemies who had to be fought without mercy. The pontiff's real project was to reassert his authority in Western Christendom in the face of monarchical and secular power. The struggle between the kings and the clergy had to be channeled into another front that would also restore the church's moral sovereignty in Christian Europe. The crusade was led by the Bishop of Le Puy, and Urban II set out across France to preach it. Now all royal and ecclesiastical authorities were to submit to papal power. Philip I of France was excommunicated for adultery. Henry IV was forced to leave Italy. The centre and north of the country were ruled by Matilda and Conrad, loyal to Urban II as well as the Normans under Count Roger I, whom he appointed as papal legate in Sicily. Urban II held several more synods, but he did not live to see the triumph of the Crusaders in Jerusalem on July 15, 1099, for he died on June 29 in Rome. He was buried in the crypt of St. Peter's and beatified by Pope Leo XIII on July 14, 1881. Don't close the video yet. If you like everything related to the medieval period, this is your site. If you found this video interesting and would like to see more videos, subscribe, leave us a like and write in the comments what other battle or character you would like to see in the channel. This will help us to grow and keep creating much more content. Now with nothing more to say, we say goodbye.